So good morning, everyone. My name is Nick Lucchetti, meteorologist here at the Raleigh office, and welcome to the routine, routine weekly briefing. Uh, this period will, for this uh, talk will cover uh, the period from today, Monday, September 26th, through this Sunday, October 2nd. All right, so off the bat, um, I'm sure you're all mostly interested in uh, our thoughts on the latest on Hurricane Ian. Uh, so I figured I'd just show you a uh, visible satellite loop of the storm. This was taken about 20 minutes ago. Um, so this is pretty recent. So you can see that Ian is uh, definitely uh, organized into, um, you know, what we typically see with hurricanes and actually has the, the latest recon has, uh, um, mission has shown that it has reached category one strength and has sustained winds of 75 miles per hour. Uh, the storm is expected to rapidly strengthen over the next day or so into a major hurricane status as it, um, you know, tracks across Cuba and into the, the Gulf um, and approaches Florida. It is expected to weaken some around landfall, um, but that is the general um, forecast for now. And I will touch on that a little bit later in a couple slides. So what are, what are our thoughts right now on the potential impacts to North Carolina? Well, I just wanted to show you this map. This is a, I won't get into the details here, but too much, but this is some of our latest ensemble runs um, overlaid on the same plot. And you can see the the thick colored lines are the, the ensemble means for those different models. And this is valid on Saturday morning. Um, so after it has made landfall, um, you can see that there's still some decent uncertainty. You have all the different runs on here plotted, and you have this blue ellipsoid that shows the, um, you know, the general, um, you know, how how tightly packed all these runs are together. And you can see it's not very tightly packed. So there's still uncertainty in uh, the eventual evolution after the storm makes landfall. Um, and so we do have uncertainty as far as you know the nitty gritty details of of the impacts here in Central North Carolina. However. Our confidence is pretty high that we will likely see wet and windy conditions uh, this weekend. Um, so again, there is still some uncertainty in the eventual evolution of this system. However, we are pretty confident that we will see um, wet conditions, particularly, um, especially Friday into a Saturday time period. So this is actually the uh, official National Hurricane Center uh, forecast track cone of uncertainty on the left panel here. This is from the 11 a.m. update. So this is the most official, uh, recent forecast. So you can see again, I'm using my pointer here, um, it's, it's expected to reach major hurricane strength um, through middle of this week as it approaches Florida. They have it currently weakening um, near, uh, near or at uh, into a hurricane. Uh, uh, not a major hurricane, but a hurricane by the time it reaches Florida. And then you can see that it, they have a uh, quickly decreasing intensity into a depression, um, you know, as it moves into the Southeast. So there is a, by the time it gets up here to North Carolina, there is a lot of land that it's going to interact with. Um, so it will weaken some. However, um, even with the remnants, you can still have impacts here locally um, that, you know, we need to continue to watch. So you can see that that cone does fan out pretty pretty widely here um, as we get into the southeast after Florida. So the that they're they're basically showing there as well that the confidence of where this will end up tracking is still pretty low at this time as it approaches North Carolina. And then on the right here we have the uh, tropical storm force wind speed probabilities, and this only goes just the caution here only goes out uh, five days. So you can see this is a uh, um, valid uh, Saturday morning. Um, and you can see that some of those probabilities, although low for tropical uh, storm force winds, do start to kind of creep into our the southern periphery of our area. Um, so that's the kind of that's the official National Hurricane Center's um, current forecast. So we'll continue to monitor this. Um, you know, again, we are confident that we'll definitely see some rain from this and maybe some windy conditions. Uh, as well, probably some some windy conditions. However, um, those nitty gritty details um, 
you know, we still still need to wait a couple of days to see, um, you know, the latest model outputs and, and to, to key in on those details. So taking a step back, I just wanted to show the overall pattern for this entire week. And then I'll, I'll get into a little bit more detail about rainfall totals expected from the storm uh, this weekend. So today, uh, last night we had a cold front roll through the area. You can see in this upper left panel, um, dictating the cold front here, it's, it's moved southeast of our area at this point. And behind that, we basically have, oh, I'm sorry. Uh, behind that, we have high pressure building in over the central US. As we progress into middle of the week, you can see that that high pressure builds and starts to wedge eastward as we get into late week here on the lower left panel. Um, so with that, you can see that we basically have no rain in the forecast. Um, through mostly through Thursday, and we'll have drier conditions and uh, cooler conditions below below normal temperatures actually this week. So um, today we'll we'll see some temps you know get up into the lower 80s across the southeast um, into the 70s in the northwest. Um, but that cooler air is expected to start funneling in tonight into tomorrow um, into into the mid to late week period. Um, again. Keep mentioning there is still uncertainty with respect to you know the impacts from from the remnants of Hurricane Ian as it moves up here into North Carolina, um, but you can see that in in the late week period we start to see um, in this lower left panel we start to see uh, that storm reach landfall here in um, Florida and then by into the weekend period it, it should track somewhere up into our area um, and again the current forecast suggests that Friday and Saturday would is likely the most impactful period um, from this system. But again, that can change depending on, you know, the overall uh, actual, you know, evolution and progression of the storm. And, you know, we will continuously be watching and, and providing updates with respect to that. So how much rain are we actually expecting from the storm? Here's just the plot for the seven day accumulated precipitation. Um, I just want to note again with that high pressure wedging in over the next several days here um, into late or into the Thursday time period, we're not expecting any rain. So I, I didn't want to show those graphics. Um, I wanted to focus on this graphic specifically. But this is the seven day um, accumulated precipitation expected over the area in the southeast. And um, this is the uh, total rainfall through Monday, October 3rd. So that includes the storm and the amount of rain that we're expecting from that. So it looks like generally anywhere from two to four inches, um, maybe pushing upwards of five across the um, you know, I-95 corridor. That's the current forecast. Again, there's uncertainty still in that time period. So this could change. Um, but as we get closer, we should be able to um, better key in on, on exact amounts. And it's also important to note that there will likely be locally higher amounts. Um, with the amount of moisture associated with tropical systems and you know heavy downpours can just set up somewhere and, and you know you're, you're going to get localized amounts uh, higher than what is being forecast here but that is the general current forecast for total rainfall amounts across the state in this image here roughly two to four inches so with in mind with that in mind uh you know what are what are our most concern our our main concerns right now is the potential for flash flooding. Um, so this is the Weather Prediction Center's excessive rainfall outlook. And this is their day five period, um, which I put on top here is basically the Friday to Saturday period. So we already all we are already um, outlined in a slight risk for uh, flash flooding, um, which you know typically means mostly localized flash flooding in urban areas. Um, and uh, you know, uh, you know, scattered instances of that, uh, but um, essentially uh, they have this currently uh, currently outlined in a in a slight risk here. But this just, it's important to know that this could change. Um, you know, we could be enhanced into a moderate again. It's, a lot of that's related to the potential track um, and how how it uh, evolves. Um, sorry, I, I was getting a little uh, um, distracted by some questions here, so I'll, I'll just address these now before uh, finishing. Um, actually, let me let me finish the whole thing and then I'll come back to y'all. Um, I think that that's a better um, approach here. So that's uh you know the excessive rainfall outlook. So flash flooding is potentially um, uh, there's a potential for that this this weekend. Um, I just want to really quickly show this. Uh, this is uh, you know we also are looking at potential for 
you know, we always look at river forecasts. Uh, so these are the major river forecast points that we um, forecast for. And the main takeaway here when it comes to major river flooding potential from the storm, the we've had really recently dry conditions, um, which should, should help reduce the threat of any significant flooding. Now this, this image is based off of that forecast of two to four inches. Um, so this could change, but the main takeaway here is that we see a lot of green, which basically is saying there's um, our ensemble members or our ensemble forecast models are not really too hyped on you know moving any of our forecast our river forecast points into um, any flooding potential. So that is good news. Um, we will continue to monitor this, but overall, because of the recent dry conditions we've had, and given the forecast of two to four inches, generally we're not expecting um, other than maybe some rises on these rivers. Not really. Uh, forecasting um, any flooding from these. So again, that may change depending on how the uh, forecast changes, uh, the QPF forecast. Uh, severe weather-wise, there is no severe expected weather expected at this time. So I'm not going to spend too much time on this. So then, just a quick brief summary. Again, we'll have dry conditions through Tuesday, or sorry, through Thursday. Um, again, there's uncertainty with respect to the impacts from Hurricane Ian. However, we do have confidence that we will see rain and some windy conditions um, as the remnants lift north through our area. And the main hazard at this point is they have introduced a slight chance for flash flooding Friday into Saturday across the entire area. Um, but we will be issuing um, additional briefings as we approach this weekend. So please check back for updates as we get closer and we can key in on those more uh, um, defined details. So with that, I can open up the questions. We do already have a couple questions here. Um, so 